Welcome to my second lecture on module four, <clears throat> normal distribution. I've introduced you guys to the concept of normal distribution and what the difference is between a normal distribution and a uh, binomial distribution coming from a discrete probability distribution or a discrete environment to a continuous environment, which is module four. And we talked about the fact that in a discrete environment, you can count the outcomes, but in a continuous environment, you cannot count the number of outcomes. Examples, you can count the number of outcomes that you dealt with in module three were things like the number of left-handed people, number of people that have iPhones, number of students that were absent on Tuesday, or the number of hours you, sorry, the number of absences that a student has during the week. These are all discrete experiments and they're governed by discrete probability distributions. But if you were looking into or and calculating probabilities for experiments such as the number of hours you've studied last week, the number of times, uh, I mean, not the number of times that's discrete, the number, uh, the, your, the probability, the number of temperatures below 100 degrees, um, your mileage between 50 and 60 miles an hour, how many mileages are there between those two mileage points, and, and things of that nature are called continuous probability distributions and or are governed by a continuous probability distribution because you can't count the number of outcomes in those experiments. If I say I'm looking for the IQs less than 107, how many IQs are less than 107 and greater than 90, you won't be able to answer that question because there are infinitely many IQs there. And these are all done in a normal distribution setting. So every time you're dealing with experiments where you cannot count the number of outcomes, those experiments must be done using some kind of a continuous probability distribution. And the one we're using today is called a normal distribution in this course. There are lots of other continuous probability distributions, but in our course, we'll only be looking at the normal distribution, the bell-shaped curve, which is the most popular, easy, and the best of all, and most common in social and natural sciences. Now, the calculations in the normal distribution are based on uh, three variables. They're based on a variable P, which I call probability, or percentage or percentile. All these three mean the same thing. They just mean some kind of a probability. Percentage, probability, percentile all mean the same. The second variable you'll be working with in this chapter is called X. We call that the non-standard variable. normal variable and we'll be dealing with Z which we call it a standard normal variable so we're dealing with these three variables in this topic and they're going to come in pairs so we will start looking at the variables Z and P. The environment here is known as standard normal distribution, which means basically we're dealing with Z scores. We'll talk about non-standard normal distribution later. So, as I said earlier, this chapter is basically based on four calculations, and here you'll see two of them, and the other two will be under what's called a non-standard normal distribution, which will be in terms of X values. So, standard normal distributions are in terms of Z-scores, and that's where we'll be dealing with finding either the Z variable given P or the P variable given Z. So here's a couple of examples and the commands you need to use on Excel to calculate these things. So my first one that we need to do, one out of four, will be to say, I want to find the probability, and I'm gonna call this example one, case one. 
I'm going to ask you to find the probability that z is, say, less than 1.74. Now, here, if I draw this, and remember, everything here is going to be based on the normal distribution, which is a bell-shaped curve. And if this is a standard normal distribution, which means it's in terms of z-scores, then the mean here will always be 0. This is my z-axis and this is my p-axis. It's almost like a, a x, y axis, but x is z and y is p. So we're dealing with two variables here. And if you notice here, I'm saying find a probability that z is less than 1.74. So basically, our z value is given, which is 1.74, and they want me to find the probability. So again, you notice we're dealing with these two variables. One is given, the other one you need to find. So what probability is it we're trying to find? Well, before actually me giving you the command that will actually help you find that probability, I want to intuitively show you what that probability represents in this picture here on the right. Well, if the middle is zero, because the z-axis the center is always zero. So every time you're dealing with the z variable, you're dealing with a x, y, or z, p axis where the center of the normal distribution is always zero, the mean. Now, if the center is zero and we're looking for probability that z is less than 1.74, then 1.74, I would think, will be here somewhere. Because remember, this way is positive on the number line, and this way is negative, and it is basically the number line on z-axis. So, so this way is a negative direction, this way is a positive direction. So obviously, all the z-scores to the left of zero will be negative, all the z-scores to the right of zero will be positive. So basically, I'm trying to find a probability that z is less than 1.74. So the z-score is given here. And I need to find the probability, and I'm going to use a yellow color for highlighting this so you guys could see it. So here's the probability that I am being asked to find. Basically, they want me to find this probability here. Make it a little smaller so I can get into the shading of it. I just deleted that, didn't I? It's okay, I can shade it again. So here's the picture of the probability in question. So when I say find a probability that z is less than 1.74, I'm basically asking you to tell me how much that yellow area is. Now, of course, you could do this using calculus, but here we're just going to use simple Excel commands to figure this out. Again, don't forget there are four items that we need to do in this entire module, and here's one of them. And the basic default version is always the area to the left. So if I'm asking you for the area to the right, since the whole thing is 100%, you have to do one minus. But we'll talk about that on the second, on, on, on the second phase of this lecture. So, or I may even call it lecture three. We'll see if I'll have time to finish it in this one. So basically, we're going to start with the default versions of it, which, is, which means the area always to the left is given. So that's default. And that's what default Excel commands are based on, based on always areas to the left of the number you're working with. Don't forget that. So they've given me 1.74 as a z-score, and they want me to find that area. Uh, and what would be the command for that? Well, you'll go to Excel, and of course, I'll publish an Excel document that I'll actually do this for you so you could see how it's done literally on Excel. 
but the command you're going to type here will be to say equals norm that takes you to the normal distribution dot s means you're dealing with a standard normal distribution and just distribution dist and if you do that and you open it the excel will actually tell you what you need to type you need to type a z value well what's my z value my z value is 1.74 comma and then you'll see it says true or false true means cumulative false false means probability density you never worry about false in this class so it's always true for us because we're always looking at a cumulative situation which means it's always from the left so this yellow area is a cumulative area so you write cumulative but in excel instead of writing cumulative you could just write true and that's what that means that means we're dealing with the area to the left of the value and if you type that and press enter you'll get point i mean rounding it to four decimal places you get 0 0.9591 and that's the yellow area so this yellow area here is 0.9591 or basically the probability is 0.9591 or basically p for a z value of 1.74 to the left is 95 percent or now intuitively speaking if you really want to put it in the structured sentence so that it would make sense you would say the probability that you'd be below 1.74 standard deviations above the mean is 96 percent i'll say it again the probability that you below 1.74 standard deviations above the mean in a normal distribution is 96 percent okay so you just have to you know, just incorporate that in your thoughts and then try to feel it and understand it um, again the probability that you be less than 1.74 standard deviations above above the mean is 96 percent yes z-scores are numbers of standard deviations so if a z-score is five that just means you're five standard deviations above the mean if the z-score is negative 1.8 or negative two, it means you have two standard deviations below the mean, uh, which is on the left. So that's just that's just what that entails. So here I've given you the z score and I'm asking you to find the probability. So you did, and you have to use norm.sdist. All right. Now I'm going to reverse this process. This is case two. Now I'm going to say, well, what if I I'm going to separate this. Now, what if I says, again, we're dealing with Z's and P's. So we're still dealing with a standard normal distribution. But this time, I am going to give you the P and I'm going to ask you to give me the Z, which is the exact reverse of what I did above. So here, let's pose a new problem. So let's say I want to find the point that separates the bottom 70% of the normal distribution from the top 30%. So let me draw it for you guys so you can see what I'm talking about. So here's my normal distribution, standard normal distribution, obviously, which means now this is my, oops, that was, this is my whatever the p-axis, and this is my z-axis. Now, I want to get the z-value that separates the bottom 70 from the top 30. Well, if I wanted to draw it, I would say this is the z-score that I still did. I don't know what that is. I know the middle is 0 because it's standard normal distribution. And they've given me the p-value. Again, I'm going to go to my yellow color, and I'm going to color this thing here. Uh, so let's do this. There you go. So here's the area to the left of that z-value. And I want to find out that z-value if that yellow area is uh, 70%. Make it a little thinner. Yes. So here I've given you the p. So my p is 
my probability is the bottom 70%, by default it's always to the left, and I need to find Z. When the previous ones, I had given you the Z score and I was asking you to find P. Here I'm giving you the P and I'm asking you to find Z. So it's exactly the reverse. Oh, by the way, we all know what this is called from, I'm sure you remember the name from the previous modules. This was called the 70th percentile. 70th percentile. So if I ask you to find the 70th percentile, I'm basically asking you to find the z-score that gives you the bottom 70% of the normal distribution or separates the bottom 70% of the normal distribution from the top 30%. And I want that border value. I want this value right here and I'm gonna put it in red. I want this value right here. What is that number? What is that z-score that will separate the bottom 70% of the normal distribution from the top 30% in a standard structure? Because remember, all of this, or both of these examples are, con are, call or are done under the standard normal distribution. I'm gonna show you the same two, two different cases for a non-standard version of this, which keeps the P but changes the Z to X. And those are non-standard normal distribution. And I'll give you guys the codes for that after I'm done with the standard one. So going back to the reverse problem, I call it, if I've given you the P and I'm asking you to find the Z score and, I've, and, it's the, and it's the default version, which means you have the area on the left side, then it's quite simple. You'll just type equals to on Excel. Remember, I've given you the P and you are finding the Z. So what you type is equal to norm, which is it's a normal distribution, dot S, meaning it's a standard normal distribution, but it's the inverse problem, which means this time I'm going the other way around. Instead of giving you Z and asking you for P, I'm giving you P asking for Z. When that's the case, we call that the inverse problem, not a distribution. So you call inverse and open parentheses, and you'll notice that Excel will tell you that all you have to type here is that probability, that default probability on the left which is 0.7, and you have to write the decimal version of it, and you don't have to type nothing else. And if you press enter here, if you type this command on a spreadsheet, you'll get your Z value, that Z value I've been looking for, this number here, that red dot there, and it'll tell you that that value is 0.52 if I round it to two decimal places, which is what I'm going to probably ask you to do on the test. Here, probabilities in this module are four decimal places, as you can see here, and the z-scores and the x-scores that you're going to calculate are going to be two decimal places, and I will indicate that on the exams as well. So here are the two cases out of the four cases. I told you guys it's not that bad. So these are the two cases out of the four cases. These are the two different calculations you need to perform when you've been given a standard normal distribution, which means your distributions are in terms of Z's and P's. In other words, your X axis is Z, your Y axis is P. And there are only two calculations, the forward calculation, which is the first one, uh, example one, and uh, that's when they give you Z and ask you for P, and that's the one you have to use the norm.s.dist command. The second one, is again standard normal distribution but the inverse problem which means I've given you P and I'm asking you to find Z and in that scenario you'll use the norm.s inverse command so that's it there are only two commands you have to use to calculate anything I ask you when it comes to standard normal distribution I'm gonna give you Z ask you for P so you use the first example procedure or I'm gonna ask you for Z given P, which you'll use the second one you see here, which is the inverse problem. Great, so this concludes the calculations for the standard uh, normal distribution or standard normal variable. My next lecture will be doing the same thing, but this time I'll be focusing on a standard normal variable. And when I'm done with that lecture, then I'll just put it all on Excel and literally show you how I'm typing it and how these answers are appearing. Thank you guys and see you next time.